It's day 76. We're going to look at building our own web server in Flask. Now, Flask is a Python web server. And what exactly does that mean? Well, this is a program that is going to run all of the time and it's going to create the web pages for your entire website. Now, hold on, Baldy, what's happening here? Why is this different to the last three lessons? Well, the last three lessons, we served up static HTML pages. And what that means is that the contents of those pages will never change, which most of the time is fine. But if you're trying to build a web application, something like Facebook or even Replit, something that's going to be dynamic and is going to change depending upon who you are and what you've told it to do, then you need to build a web server. A web server works in a little bit of a different model to what we've used before. Before, we've always used code that any user that wants to run it has to run that specific piece of code. In Flask, we make one web server, we click run, and we give the website address to anyone that wants to use the program. This means that we can actually make our code private if we want. Now, just to give you the heads up, this is a paid feature. You need to buy cycles or hacker plan for it, but it's very, very worthwhile. If you want to make any of your Replit code private, use the hamburger button to add some cycles. And then from the drop down menu at your name, you'll be able to click the private button, which I've got turned on here. That means that no one will be able to see the code for your website, which is great for preventing hackers from doing anything dodgy. So let's explore how this Python code is different from what we've seen before. Well, first of all, the first line is very, very simple. It's importing Flask and with a capital F. Line three there is where it starts the Flask application up. And that is something we're going to need later on. That variable app is really important because we'll be talking to it later on. Line six tells it what to do if we've gone to our website just plain. We've gone to our website address with just a forward slash at the end. And the subroutine immediately after it, in this case, index, tells it what to do. Whatever it returns is going to be what web page it shows on the screen. In this case, we should see a website called Hello from Flask. The final line is a line that always should come last, and that is the bit that turns on your Flask web server. Let's click Run and see what happens. So you'll see two things happen here. The console popped into life because we've turned our web server on, and our web view popped up because it started serving web pages. We've just gone to our website. You can go to that website in a different browser or on your phone, and that same message would pop up for you. That's because this, the bog standard forward slash, is how we get into our website address by just typing it in. And of course, we can customize that. Notice this time, just clicking refresh doesn't do what you think. It's because the web server is serving up pages. We do need to stop and run our web server each time we make a change. But the change is there. Let's build another page. We need at app.root or route, depending upon which country you're born in. And in here, we can use normal quotes or single quotes. Remember, they are interchangeable. And a forward slash to say what page we're going for. Well, let's assume that we're going to go to our home page. If I go to this website address slash home, I'm going to go to whatever subroutine happens here. Let's create it, the home subroutine. And what I'm going to do here is actually create a page instead. I'm going to make my page equal to the moment, just some blank quotes, and I'm going to return the page. What I'm actually going to do is turn that into three quotes and I'm going to paste some HTML code in there or write it. It's up to you. So you'll see I've pasted in there the code from my Baldi's page. If I stop the server and reopen it, we say get to the same page first of all. But if I go to my web view, I'm going to bring up my toolbar now and go slash home. Then I'm going to get my Baldi's site. Now, again, this isn't ideal because it's not giving me any images. How do I get images on Flask? Well, it's a little bit harder than you'd think. We need to create a folder that's going to store anything that we're going to serve up without processing. 
This includes images. I'm gonna open my file pane. I'm gonna create a folder and by default, it's usually called static. Anything I want my web page to load, videos, images, sounds, files, needs to go in there. And of course I can build further folder structures from there. When we create our app, after our underscores for the object orientation, I'm gonna add a new property, static URL path. And that's gonna be whatever you call the folder, in this case, forward slash static. If I put inside there now, because you'll see that mine is looking for a folder called images slash Picard, I'm gonna make an images folder. I'm gonna bring my Picard picture in. I'm gonna rename it so it has the correct name. And if I just change my source to be static slash images slash Picard, I should be able to get that image loaded in there just fine. So what have we done so far? We've created a web server, we've served the page, and we've done the amazing making a static folder so we can actually put images and resources in there. This feels like a lot of work compared to what was there before. So let me show you what we can do as a result of this. If I import date time and add code in to get today's date, I can very easily put that into my page. If I turn my page into an F string, then I can replace or add parts of the code as if they were a normal variable. So let's put an H2 in there. And inside that H2, I'm gonna put in today's date, just like we put in an F string anywhere else. If I stop and restart my server, then my page will serve today's date. And that will change based on today's date. So if I go to this page tomorrow, it'll be different. If you go to this page now, and please do, it will be today's date. It's an amazing thing. We now have the ability to calculate, put things in, create variables, and place it in the page itself, which is very exciting. So of course, that first page, the one you get to by default, you might want a link on there. So we can do the same thing there. Page, use the three quotes trick. Instead of returning hello from David, return the page, which is the value of the page. And then within there, let's write a very quick HTML page. If we stop and we refresh, the first page now will render with a link. I can click that link to take me to our second page. So I can build a complete website inside one Python file where I can bring variables and stuff like that in really, really easily. Okay, common problems. One of the most common problems is that people get in the habit of copying and pasting the definitions of the different pages because they are essentially the same thing. But if you do, you must make an effort to change the name of the subroutine. In this example, I've got the root for forward slash, which is the default web page address, and the root for slash home, and they both have a subroutine called index. If I run it, you'll see the error message I get is that view mapping function is overwriting an existing endpoint function index, which is a very complicated thing to say. But it's basically saying, look, you can't have two subroutines with the same name. And we know this. We know this from the subroutine stuff. We know this from different files in a Python folder. So why are we doing it here? People do it because they copy and paste this because it's hard to remember. So just make sure that whatever you call that subroutine, it doesn't have to be called home. It could be called home things, whatever. It doesn't matter. The first subroutine after that at app definition is what we'll run when we go to that page. And therefore, we'll get that from it. Another common problem is just debugging. If I go in and break something with our date time function, for instance, let's change that to tada instead of today. Now, you'd think that when I write this, that code would be read and it would crash the server. Not so. Look, the server's running perfectly well. And even in the console that I'm sort of overlapping here at the moment, there's no errors. The problem is, is that this is another way of building software. We've looked at standard code. We've looked at object orientated code. And this is a version of that, which is called event driven programming. That means the code for a page is not run until I click the button to go on that page. So in this case, the code to get today's date won't act be accessed until I click this link. And then suddenly you'll see an error in the console and you might see your page saying internal server error. This makes debugging a bit fun because it's not just a case of putting in a couple of breakpoints and running it and stepping it through. You actually have to run the web server and click around on the web page to see what you can do and to see if you can crash it yourself. 
course, the problem here, no attribute to that on line 17, is easy for us to fix. But notice we don't get any confirmation it's working. We actually have to click there and go straight away. The console is really useful. It'll tell you what files it's serving up. It'll tell you how it's all working there. And it's worth looking at as people use your site. Of course, if you've given your link out, and of course you don't give this link at the top to anybody because this is the private bit, you give this link here to people that want to use your site now because this is where people need to be going. The final error is this, and this is a really common one. And it is if you don't have the definition of where your static folder is, sometimes it won't pick it up. It's always a good idea to have that static definition, even if you've not called it slash static, if you call it slash images, slash my stuff, whatever you want, pop it in there to make sure that it always resolves to the correct place when you're putting images or other things in. As ever, I've broken a bunch of code. Please go and fix it for me, especially with my server. It's embarrassing when people click on links and it just says server error. Your challenge today is very, very simple. I'd like you to create a Flask web server and I'd like you to have two website endpoints. I'd like you to have slash portfolio, which will display your portfolio page. And I'd also like you to have slash link tree, which will display your link tree. All I need you to do for that is go and copy and paste the code. Make sure you've got a static folder to host your images and your CSS make sure your links are all updated. You might need to rename one of your CSS files because you can't have two CSS files with the same name in the same folder, but I'm sure that you can get that done. When you're done, publish it on the community and share with us your website address using the hashtag replit 100 days of code so we can see what you're doing on social media. Tomorrow, we'll be looking at templating. That is, instead of having all the code filling up the page with no syntax highlighting, how can we store the pages as HTML files and simply replace the variables. Thank <music> you.